Hey folks, Matt from artoftheimage.com. So Tom Hogan has an interesting article called Why 4K? Here's Why Not. Basically he's saying that Nikon should not be putting 4K in their cameras. A lot of people seem to be thinking that 4K will bring Nikon fully into the video game, make them a uh, significant player. And Tom's got some really good points. Why not? why this shouldn't happen and why it won't necessarily do what people think it's going to do. First and foremost, um, Tom says that broadcasting is still standardized on HD video. Basically what he's saying is that's all the variations up to 1080p, but that's what broadcasting is still standardized on. He breaks it down further, saying that if you want really good broadcast quality, that you need at least 50 megabytes per second, you need 422 color, preferably 444, and also preferably 10-bit uh, recordings. And so basically, he's saying that there's no need for 4K because in general, uh, broadcasting is still in, at the most, 1080 HD. Furthermore, he's pointing out, and to quote him, still cameras that do video are typically 20 to 28 Mbps and uh, 420 color and 8 bits. So what he's getting at here is that the cameras we have right now still aren't up to the task to do video the way it should be done for uh, broadcast quality video. Now, some of them, like say the GH3, they probably get closer than others because I mean, you can get past 50 megabytes per second and you could do some hacks and things to improve your color and things like that. But basically, we don't have cameras that are producing the quality we could use with our current standard of 1080 HD built right into the camera. It has to be done in externally uh, in post. Which brings us to number two. He says, what we really want is something like Apple ProRes compression instead of AVCHD and at higher bandwidths with as many bits as possible. I catch myself on all those bits and widths. Anyways, basically what he's saying here again is that we need better abilities in camera for the current standard we have, and that's the 1080 HD, before we really should be looking at going to 4K. And I think he's right there. You can get all these in post, as Tom points out, but there's really nothing out there that allows you to get this straight out of camera. Tom puts it nicely when he asks the question, which would we rather have, 1080p, 1920 by 1080, done right, or 4K, 3840 by 2160, done wrong? He answers it too when he says, the answer is simple to anyone doing video with DSLRs, 1080p done right. Frankly, I think he's got an excellent point here and I would tend to agree with him. And that brings us to point number three. Who's driving the demand for 4K? I don't really think it's the consumers, although when the consumers do get riled up and say they want it, there's somebody that's causing that to happen and as Tom's pointing out, it's the TV manufacturers and even more specifically Sony who are putting 4K abilities into their cameras or will be soon, in which case they've got a nice total package because they'll sell you the camera that'll generate 4K content and they'll sell you the TV that'll play that 4K content. Tom points out that 3D technology came out and it didn't really catch on. It was going to be a big seller thing for the TV manufacturers, but they didn't really get what they wanted out of it. It didn't really catch on with consumers and it didn't really sell a lot of 3D TVs. I don't know about you, but I don't have one. So with 3D not really working for them, what's the next sales pitch? What's the next marketing gimmick? 4K. And that's where Tom's saying it's the TV manufacturers that are driving this demand or this supposed demand for 4K the push for it anyways. So there you go, folks. That's Tom's three reasons why he says Nikon should not go 4K. What do you think? Leave me some comments below. Do you agree with Tom? Do you not agree with Tom? And uh, we'll talk to you soon here at artoftheimage.com. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon with some new videos, articles. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of photography, videography, technology, right here at artoftheimage.com. Thanks.